video I'm going to talk about SpO2 monitors, also sometimes called a pulse ox. It monitors oxygen saturation and it's also going to monitor pulse rate on your patients as well. They usually come in like a little handheld piece like this. Clinics usually will have these kind of scattered around. We use them in surgery if you're not using like an ECG monitor. Use them in surgery, use them for hospital patients and you can use them in consult if vets are wanting to do that. But these have come so far, like this one has a, the charger on it is a USB-C cable. We are definitely living in 2023. I just want to go over kind of the basics of what you're monitoring with one of these and the normal parameters for your dogs and your cats. When you're monitoring SpO2 for dogs and cats, you always want to aim for 100%. That is the, the goal. 99% is okay. If your SpO2 is dropping to anything kind of less than 95%, that's when I would be concerned and I would be checking our patient, checking the color, checking gum color, checking, you know, all the other vital signs, heart rate, pulse rate, everything else, just to make sure that that reading isn't correct. If you were to say to get down to like 85%, that is concerning and you need to let the vet know straight away because something's happening something's not right here and you need to correct it before you continue on with if it's a procedure or if it's a hospital patient that patient needs care as soon as possible so for a dog you want your pulse rate to be about 70 to 140 beats per minute obviously this is going to change depending on the size of the dog so for a smaller dog you want the heart rate or the pulse rate to be higher and for a larger dog it's going to be lower and you need to take in consideration your pre-meds and any kind of other medications that the dog is on as well so it kind of varies cats is usually going to be between and it's a big kind of range but around 100 to 200 beats per minute they usually sit around 160 um but always, always taking into consideration different kind of components that are going on with the cat and medications and drugs and pre-meds a couple of components to your pulse ox monitor so you've got your cable which attaches to the pot to the actual machine and then you've got the other end there attaches to your patient you can put that onto the tongue or the gum or the vulva or the penis depending always choose a mucous membrane to put that on once it's it has to be a moist area that is where it's going to conduct and get a really nice reading that you want um, we've got charger so this is this usb see that i was telling you about insane this one comes with a really nice like cover if you do have a cover definitely always keep it in the cover because if you're doing dentals and things like that there's blood there's mucus there's water everywhere so you keep your equipment in good condition by keeping it in your cover like that and so this is the actual spo2 monitor it has this really cool kind of stand which i love so you could just sit this in top like next to your anesthetic machine and you can monitor it or you can have it out and you can have it on the bench so let's have a look when i turn this on i just want to show you kind of just general generally what we're looking at right now so you can see on here we've got a couple of buttons so if your alarm is going off repetitively and it's getting really annoying and it's annoying the pets which it usually does you can set, press this button which is a, it turns off the alarm um, you've got a menu kind of option here to look back at records let's turn it on and have a look so We've got an alert straight away SpO2 sensor off. That is because I don't actually have it plugged in yet. So that plugs in the top right up here. So that's good, it's telling me that. So our SpO2 percentage would come up here, our oxygen saturation percent. And then we've got our pulse rate down here, which would alert down here. So if we're gonna go to menu, and we can adjust if it's a cat, a dog, which is important. That is gonna give you different kind of readings. So parameters like a pulse rate for a cat is gonna be a lot higher than it is for a dog. So make sure that you are changing that. It would also show you up in here. See, there's a cat signal up in there. So, so if I press this menu button here, and then we're gonna navigate through the menu with these two buttons and this kind of files option. So if I'm pressing the files option, it's going to dab across. You can paint, change this to like the patient ID that you've got in your computer system. Um, but I just wanna go down and change this to, to dog. So you press the files button and then I'm gonna press down again. I'm gonna press that files button again and that's done. Now I can see that I've got a dog up in there. I might do a fake one, I'll attach it to my finger and we'll see how fast this kind of reads my SpO2 and pulse rate. Now I've attached that nice and snug in there straight away and it is straight away giving me this, that the finger is off, this is not attached, which is accurate. So let's just plug it in. And obviously I'm not a dog or a cat, so this is 
probably not going to be the right settings for me but let's just see how we go running so it's reading I'm alive and here we go 93% oxygen saturation not too happy about that but the key here is to give it a minute to read it'll sometimes start off low and you can see it's kind of slowly getting up there pulse rate at 99 which is okay and you can see this spo2 sometimes i see people put the spo2 on it'll read at 92 percent straight away and people freak out but just give it a minute to kind of kick into settings also another reason this might not be at 99 or 100 is because i do have it on my dry finger so it's not a wet kind of moist mucous membrane but it is going up there so just give your equipment a minute to kind of kick in but that is what you're kind of looking at if you're doing a, if you're using your pulse ox in clinic let's take it off the finger and see how quick it yep straight away it's come off which is good you need to know if, if your spo2 probe has come off at any stage back on and we're reading again it's so fast, this. Sometimes they kind of lag and they take a while, but this one's actually really kind of quick, which I love. That's just the basics around your SPO2 monitor. If, you want, if you've got other questions or you want to know more, drop them in the comments below. Yeah,